Hey, City Center Baptist Church family, it's Pastor Brad coming to you from DDQ headquarters. Digging deeper question number two this week asks, Jesus experienced a brutal betrayal of trust by someone close to him. How does his story help you address your personal pain inflicted by others? Few things are worse than having someone close betray your trust. I tend to trust others until proven otherwise. It is painful when someone who should have your back stabs you in the back instead. I'm sure many of us have faced situations where our trust was betrayed, resulting in severed relationships. Or perhaps we betrayed another's trust and hurt them. We are all broken, and sometimes those betrayed betray others in turn. The pain is sadly forwarded and the cycle continues. What can be done? Fortunately, the gospel provides some direction, but it is an arduous route. Let's set the context in Mark 14, verse 18. While reclining around the table during the Last Supper, Jesus revealed to his dismayed disciples that one of them was about to betray him. We know it was Judas Iscariot, but no one else knew at the time except for Jesus. The betrayal was no shock to him, for in John 6, verse 70, Jesus commended his disciples for sticking with him while many others abandoned him. But he pointed out that one of them was in league with the devil. He was referring to Judas, as the Apostle John made clear. This foresight demonstrates that God is all-knowing. It also informs us that he is all-powerful, for he can take that which is definitely not good and refashion it for great good. This is the essence of the gospel. God holds all people responsible for their decisions, but he is not handcuffed by their decisions. He remains in sovereign control. He takes sinful human choices and converts them to his strategic purposes. Jesus endured the evil tragedy of the cross to accomplish the great good of the salvation of the world. The cross was untamed, wild evil. But God broke it harnessed it, and steered it toward his ultimate purpose of transforming sinners into saints. God used G Judas's alliance with the devil and his betrayal of Jesus to restore us to heaven. All the disciples, including Judas, had been with Jesus for over three years, hearing his authoritative teaching, witnessing his miraculous signs, and observing his impeccable life. They had come to know and confess him as the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Yet after all this, Judas decided to trade Jesus into the religious authorities for a measly 30 pieces of silver. It was, and remains, the epitome of heartlessness, recklessness, and unfaithfulness. It was calculating and unconscionable. Perhaps you have experienced something similar. Someone you trusted violated your trust and you were hurt. It might have been slight or it may have been severe, but it hurt nonetheless. How can you deal with the pain and move on? The gospel points in the direction of restoration. Jesus was brutally betrayed, but his example was to trust in his father's all-knowing plan and in his all-powerful ability to transform evil into good. The key for us is learning to trust God in every situation and in every moment. Evil is real, and people make poor choices, breaking faith with others and hurting them. And we acknowledge this sad reality of human life. And it is understandable when many allow themselves to remain in that state of raw woundedness for the rest of their earthly lives. However, there is another option. We can learn to trust that God can take the evil that has happened to us and transform it for his good purposes. For another biblical example, we read of King David as his son Absalom, along with his trusted advisor Ahithophel, led an insurrection that temporarily ousted David from his throne in 2 Samuel verse, uh, chapters 15 to 17. 
David was brutally betrayed by his own son as well as his close confidant. Yet he placed his full trust in the Lord who had brought him out of numerous past perils and eventually he was returned to his throne, but not without great hardship, including the death of his beloved son. David recounted his anguish over Ahithophel's betrayal in Psalm 41 verse 9. And he was forced to pray that the Lord would frustrate the counsel of Ahithophel and turn it into foolishness in 2 Samuel chapter 15, verse 31. Once again, the takeaway for us is rooted in the gospel. Jesus feels our pain when trust is broken because he himself faced it. He can identify with our wounds, yet he shows the way forward by entrusting himself to his good heavenly Father. Without minimizing evil, God apprehends it and adjusts it to good. Like Jesus, we must learn to entrust ourselves to our good Heavenly Father. We may never know in this life the reasons for our heartaches, but in eternity, God will weave it all together, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the incomprehensible, to make a beautiful tapestry out of our broken lives that will ultimately be for our eternal good and his everlasting glory. So trust God's plan for your pain. This has been Pastor Brad coming to you from DDQ headquarters.